Hi, Kiki here. And today I want to talk about getting started with computer science in the classroom. It doesn't have to be difficult. In fact, I wrote an entire book about it with the intelligent and amazing Jane Krause. I will put details in the description box below if you're interested in ordering off Amazon. Anyway, let's get started. So today, bringing computer science to your classroom. If you are interested in bringing computer science to your classroom, the first thing you need to do is kind of assess your comfort level with computer science. If you are extremely timid, cautious, afraid, worried that your students are going to ask you questions you don't know the answer to, you're worried about messing something up, uh, if that's how you're feeling, then your students are probably going to feel it too. So you really need to have a lead learner attitude. That is arguably the most important thing to do to bring computer science to your classroom. And that means you don't have to be the expert in everything. All you need to do is show your students how to learn. Let them know in advance you didn't do this when you were their age. It's new to you also, and you are excited to give them this opportunity to do something that you didn't have the opportunity to do. Hopefully they'll get excited about that and you can teach them how to work together to figure out problems, how to be persistent and overcome frustration. Those are all great elements of computer science. If you watched my video on classroom management, you'll see that I already encourage in a computer lab environment to have students asking each other for help before they ever ask the teacher. It's, it's, an authentic learning opportunity that causes more people to learn than just the party who is having a problem. Did that make sense? I feel like that made sense. If you are a resourceful teacher and you feel like you got this, you probably do. Just focus on making it fun. Now notice I use the term resourceful teacher. I am going to do an entire video on that later, but for right now I bring it up because code.org just published a blog about a research paper that shows that resourceful teachers who bring computer science to their classrooms actually see increased scores on tests, just the standardized tests that those students have to take anyway. This is great news because it means if you're removing some of that math or or ELA time to do computer science, that doesn't mean that those scores are going to drop. In fact, some of the skills that computer science teaches, like uh, problem solving, like growth mindset, like persistence and dealing with frustration, all of those things transfer to other subjects as well. So it doesn't surprise me at all that we've seen growth in other areas when computer science has been introduced. Now, hopefully in my next video on resourcefulness, I will bring some tips on becoming a more resourceful teacher. Until then, things that you can do to become a more resourceful teacher are just get out there and look and see what's out there, dive in and give it a try. Now, the second thing that you need to think about before bringing computer science to your classroom is how comfortable are you with screen time? What kind of lessons do you like to give to your students? If you don't want your students sitting on a computer or you don't have computers to use, that is perfectly fine. In fact, I suggest that you limit computer time for, for young students, but there are so many great unplugged activities out there. I myself through code.org have worked on dozens of them. And I know that you can teach everything from sequencing, programming, uh, loops, events, conditionals, functions, you can teach all of those things without ever sitting your students down at a computer. And yes, they might not be able to transfer that knowledge, take it home and start writing programs right away, but they will have the vocabulary and the understanding of what those things mean in the real world so that when it comes time for them to go into computer science in middle school or in high school or in college, they have a real world understanding of those concepts and they aren't as far behind. 
So if you do nothing else, just try and incorporate an activity here and there around computer science using unplugged lessons. It's simple and most of them don't take that much prep work. Some of them do. The persistence and frustration lessons, for example, Marble Run and Building a Foundation, those types of lessons require a teacher to fully understand what they're trying to get across in terms of uh, frustration and how to overcome it and how to be persistent and uh, just kind of that entire growth mindset. But something like graph paper programming or binary bracelets, you can pretty much print those off the day of, bring them to class, and if you understand how they work, you can watch one of the associated videos, uh, then, then you should be just fine. All you should really need to do to tell the difference between a lesson plan that takes a lot of prep and one that doesn't take very much prep is to read the plan online and it should be spelled out pretty clearly for you there. Now code.org certainly isn't the only resource, it's just one of my favorites right now. Some other resources, CS Unplugged, which has been around for a long time, and they don't always write out a complete pathway for where their lessons are intended to fall, but if you already know you want to cover something, CS Unplugged has a lot of great lessons. And also Barefoot Computing from the UK has really hit the scene big time lately, and those resources are, are worth checking out as well. If you're okay with a little bit of technology time, we have a lot more options. For tablets, for the young ones, we have the Foos or CodeSpark. Uh, Tinker does some really good stuff. And of course, you can't forget Scratch. Scratch is kind of the iconic platform for elementary school students in computer science. Now they actually developed their platform for storytelling. So it's really great for things like ELA or science projects or any sort of presentation. The one drawback there is that it's very full featured, which means it can take a while to learn and students will often spend a lot of time with the creative things of drawing, painting, putting costumes on their characters, sounds. Uh, all of these things are fun and amazing and wonderful for projects, but it can be a little distracting when students are trying to learn. One thing you can do is take one of the many pieces of curriculum that are out there for Scratch and you can follow it as a teacher on a projector and let the students follow along kind of with you. This is great if you have students that are already exposed to computer science or they're just a little more advanced in general. On the other end of the spectrum, if your students are really beginners and you want more hand-holding for them and a little more guidance for you as a teacher, we have the Code.org Code Studio lessons. And those plan everything out in a very detailed way. Every grade is laid out step by step, sequencing things from easier to very difficult and then back to kind of an average range so we can check on what a student has learned in that time period. Uh, it's combined unplugged lessons and online lessons, and it really does expect to have a teacher present. A teacher needs to teach these concepts. We don't assume that a student will just identify, oh, this is a loop, here's how I use it, I will be able to use it again in the future. Students will learn the concepts, they will come to conclusions, they will figure things out on their own, but it really does take a teacher to help them understand the importance of putting these structures together. There are so many more out there. Um, Code Monkey. Code Monkey is a great one for students who are a little more advanced in their reading skills or if you want them to practice typing. Code Monkey is actually sort of a text based editor and students can type their commands right in and otherwise it looks very similar to the other ones. I'm sure there's other great stuff out there I'm missing. Uh, send me a tweet and I will send you some more ideas if none of these really hit with you. A third thing to consider is how much time do you have? Uh, a lot of teachers think that if they can't create this as a full class by itself they can't teach computer science or if they only have one or two weeks, it's not worth attempting it. This is not true. And, and first of all, I want to reiterate that, or iterate, did I iterate already? In any case, I'd like to say that you don't need to bring a ton of computer science to your students' lives in order to make it worth it. Just one lesson will make an impact. 
as long as it's an appropriate lesson for a beginner. So you don't have to replace something once a week with this. And I do recommend once a week as the desired cadence. Um, it gives students time to digest, to think about what they want to do, to get excited to do it again. If you're doing this every day, students can get bored of a platform fairly quickly, and then it's no longer fun and engaging for them. Also, the ideas come so fast in computer science. Moving from something like sequencing to loops to conditionals, that progression can happen really quickly in a curriculum, but we want students to have a little time with the ideas that they learned before they learn new ideas. So just giving them that digestion period is helpful. Okay, so say you have two class periods. My suggestion would be that you do an unplugged lesson and then an online lesson for the same subject and just give students a taste of something. If you have six, if you have 10, choose a curriculum path and follow it for a while. You don't have to get all the way through. And that's something that I see some of the code.org stuff as you get into fourth and fifth grade is really long. It's 30 weeks. Nobody has 30 weeks for computer science in their classroom. So you can pick and choose and you can decide what do you want to do for what. When I bring computer science to students on an ongoing basis, I will mix. I will start with easier stuff in the beginning to get some concepts laid out. I will have them move through only until they understand. I don't belabor the point. And then I will go on to something just new and different to show a little bit of transfer. Lightbot was one of my favorite things. And the makers of Lightbot have a new one now called Spritebox, and it is very good as well. So I would transfer on to something like that. And then after that, move to something like Scratch where kids can really get creative and try their hands at certain projects. That's if you have a lot of time. If you don't, no big deal. Choose your favorite. Choose the thing that you think your classroom is really going to latch on to and then give them time with it. We see teachers that do it in stations where there are stations that students can do some unplugged things and move on to some computer things. And then they move on and do some worksheets and they just kind of all go in, in circles, in cycles, little 10, 15 minute tidbits at a time. The one thing that I do wanna caution against is just having a station set up in the back of the room so that when the advanced kids are done with whatever other activity you have going on, they can go back and program. This continues to expand the equity gap that we already see in computer science where there's a lack of women and other underrepresented minorities. By definition, underrepresented means there's a lack of them. And we don't want to increase that. What we're trying to do is create an equitable situation so that all students everywhere get a taste of this by third grade so that they can conceive of themselves doing something like this when they grow up. It doesn't have to be their profession, just they need to be able to see themselves succeeding in this as an adult so that they move forward and that they can see themselves move forward. If students aren't getting this in elementary school, they might not opt into it in middle school. And then in high school, they might feel behind. So the goal here is to make sure students are enjoying, trying, believing, and, and seeing this as something that they want to explore more in depth as they get older. All right, this has been already a long video. It's longer than I intended. I will try to cut it down. If you have any questions or you want to know more about what might be a good fit for your classroom, leave me a comment. I do check them, I do read them. Or tweet to me at Kiki versus IT. I love responding to tweets. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you wanna see more teacher tips and subscribe to my channel. When you subscribe, it helps me know that the content I am providing is the correct content for my audience. Also, YouTube has been doing some strange things with letting people know when I have a new video up. So if you do wanna be the first to know when I put something up on my channel, click that little alarm bell and it will tell you. I think that's it. I think, I think we're covered. All right, 
Until next time, happy coding. Thank you.